Hi, I'm Simon Kidd and today we've come fishing for brown trout at Fernworthy Reservoir, high on the hills here of Dartmoor near Chagford. And it's a beautiful reservoir, the conditions are absolutely perfect. We've got a light wind today, the wind is actually picking up slightly. I left home this morning in brilliant sunshine, but you get up on the moor here, you've got a bit of mist and a bit of cloud and everything, it's perfect conditions. And I'm joined by my very good friend, David Grove, who's been fishing it here since 1960s and uh, he's a wealth of inf information. He's a great fisherman. We fished here together some years ago in the Commonwealth Championships. And uh, Dave, I think we've got a good good day in store, have we not? Yes, Simon, I think we're going to have a cracking day in store. I've been fishing here since the 1960s, uh, probably about 1967, 68 maybe. And in those days, it wasn't a stock reservoir. Um, it was just full of lovely little wild brown trout up to about 10 ounces, maybe the odd bigger one now and again. Uh, these days it is stocked, but the, the fish are such good quality, you can't tell the difference between a wild one and a stocked one especially once they've been in here for a few few weeks or maybe a few months, which is what the case we are in now. Um, it sits on a 530-acre site run by South West Lakes Trust. Uh, it's a beautiful reservoir. It was um, a lake that was one of the venues that we held in the Commonwealth Championships in 2014, and Angus from all, the, all over the world fell in love with the place. In fact, to this day, I still get emails asking how firm where the reservoir is and how they loved it. So um, we'll have a good day today. The conditions are lovely, uh, cloudy, a little bit of breeze, fly on the water. So without further ado, I think we should go fishing, Simon. Indeed, Dave, let's do that. But before we do so, let's um, just have a quick review on the tactics because uh, the fish are free rising here. It's brown trout only and the water's pretty clear. It's got a slight peak tinge to it. It's like tea without milk in it, basically. But um, the fish will come up from quite a depth, actually, to take a dry on the top. They're not too leader shy, um, and we've got a nice little ripple here, which is going to help us anyway. But um, my tactics for the day, I brought two rods here today, a five weight with a couple of dries on, dries only, and uh, I brought a six weight as well for a bit of distance if we need it to get out, because when it does get sunny, the fish tend to move off the bank a little bit, and sometimes it can help to get a bit of range out there uh, to reach the fish, and I'm going to put two dries on, on droppers, and then on a the point I've got a, a slightly weighted fly as well. And, um, and Dave, what, what is, what's your setup for today? Yeah, my setup is uh, a forward taper, um, seven line on a six weight rod. I'm fishing an 18 foot leader and I'm starting off with just two flies. Um, a black uh, Montana, slightly weighted on the point, size uh, 12, and then um, uh, a black uh, Bibio style type fly on the, on the dropper around about eight feet from it. And uh, what I find up here in these conditions is that very often the fish like a fly pulled quite fast just under the water, okay. which is typical um, Scottish, Welsh, Irish lock style fishing but from yeah. the bank. Okay. They do like a fly pulled quite fast and sometimes as fast as you can pull it and you'll see the fish boiling at the fly and then when you stop it takes it. Grab it. Um, if, if failing that then I'm going to fish very slowly. Similar flies but almost static. Yeah. One of those two methods will usually pick up the fish on this lake. Superb. Okay well that's what we'll do and I think another point you mentioned there as well is the size of fly. We're fishing for browns, we're fishing for they're not huge fish, but brownies generally we tend to go a bit, little bit smaller in size. So you're using size 12, yeah, 12s I, and 14s and that sort of thing. Yeah, 12, 14s, on. yeah. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Okay, let's go fishing. Two dries are sitting just nicely. The wind's perfect, absolutely lovely. Bit of blue sky just coming as well. It's warming up quite a bit, but and we just cast and uh, cast and keep moving. At the end of the day, a couple of paces and have another cast and just keep moving. And work my way along this bank. I don't have to cast too far initially, and then just literally fan cast, moving out and then moving on. I wear this casting tray, fold away casting tray up here too, um, when I'm fishing in these waters. You've got a lot of granite on the, the margins, there's some boulders and rocks, and the line will get snagged on those, and the last thing you want to do is put, um, put the line between a stud on the boots and uh, and a rock because so it's going to cut straight through it but it also keeps the line nice and clean stops it from getting dirty um, there's lots of peat and so on in the water here a lot of um, small bits in the water which operate like sand on the line and almost like sandpaper then and uh, where's your line out so quickly but 
Doing this helps save the line and helps the casting at the same time. That was a fish came to the dropper. Just as we're moving along here, we, we started just here, but just behind where we'd started, I saw a fish rise. It's the first one we've seen rise today. And uh, covered it, and nothing happened. It didn't take the fly, it didn't take the flies off the top. Two flies were sat on the top nicely. Brought the retrieve all the way in, put it up on the hang, and I thought I'd then touch the weed, lifted it again, and it was a fish, and uh, we missed it. I missed it. There's a little fish there, look. There, that's our first brownie of the day. It's not a big fish. It's uh, probably one of the wild fish that's in here. Um, what we've done is taken the dry on the top dropper. There you go, fabulous. Now I'm going to slip it back in quite big. Um, there you go. What I've done, we saw a fish rising just here just now, a bit further along, um, but I was aiming towards this bit of cover here. We've got some tree cover here. We've got some lovely boulders and everything. It's a feature at the end of the day, and uh, it's exactly where we'd expect to find a brownie. It was only literally 10, 15 feet off the bank here at the most and uh, hopefully there'll be some more along here too. There's plenty of features along as we, we go up here towards the dam and uh, the sun's just coming out now. I'm not sure if that's going to improve things or not because the conditions just now are really perfect but um, it's a start anyway. So what I'm, I'm doing is I'm just making little short casts, not, not long casts at all. I'm not having to do that. I'm covering the water from the banks all the way out as far as I can reach here. Uh, there's a slick forming out here which I will put the flies into as I get round to it, although it's just gone for the moment. Um, so you see making quite short casts, I don't want to spook the fish uh, that may be in front of us. And they're going to be quite close in, there's plenty of features here, the water drops away to about 6 to 8 feet in no distance at all. And just making nice short casts, keeping the flies, I'm fishing three dries now, I've just taken the point fly off. Um, and literally put the three dries up on the top here, sitting quite nice and high on the water. As a fish, there are a couple of fish moving, but not in range at the moment. I've just fan casted through this piece here, and I'm going to move up to that next little feature now. But it's one nice thing about fishing firmly. You fish in lovely light tackle, and you don't have to cast or be able to cast even a very long way. Fish can be right tight in, or they can be a decent distance out here off the bank, off the shore, but you can catch a piece of whatever size are here, um, from literally sometimes a couple of feet off the rocks here, where there's enough water for them to lie in and take food off the shore, terrestrials and that sort of thing that they're looking for. And uh, yeah, anyone can come and fish here and it's delightful. And it's, it's proper wilderness fishing. Oh, I missed, no, I got it, got it. There you go. That's about six feet off the bank. No more than that. It's only a small fish, another wild one probably. Taking the dry on the point. Yeah, it's a small wild fish, but that's what we're looking for. Just keeping this fish off the top until it's ready for net. There you go. Again, it's another one that's taken the. Uh, taking the dry on the top dropper. Well that wasn't dry, it was fished wet underneath with a nymph on the point. Yeah, it's lassoed itself pretty well here. Barbless, there it is.
So okay, as you saw with that fish, um, it was very, very close in. All, all morning and after lunch, I've been doing nice long casts, expecting the fish to be at range. But this, this actual fish was right by my feet. I took the fly out of the keeper ring, popped it into the water and the fish took just as it hit the water. Just shows you that's fishing. Just lengthening the cast here each time. I've been round a couple of times now, getting a bit further out all the time. And in fact, we've got a feature here. This the old track goes across here, and I think comes up over the other side over there. Um, so it drops off on the on uh, on the edge of the track here. You can see the, the deeper water to the outside. But um, the danger is to come here and start casting straight out there as far as you can reach, and then um, just putting down fish that are between us and them. And we've already seen several that are close in today that we've had. So just literally. I've put three dries back on now as well. Yeah, this is a very, very funny color coloration for a brown trout in this lake. Normally they're a nice golden yellow color, but this one is uh, taking on a real silvery appearance, just like a, just like a small sea trout. Well, that's another fine fish Dave's just caught here out of uh, Fermi the Reservoir. Typical fish actually of the better quality fish that you can catch in here. We've had several smaller ones today. The weather's been ideal. Um, it's been, the wind's been from the southwest. It's been quite light. It's been quite warm. But the water actually is extremely warm and the fish incredibly lethargic today. Um, it's been difficult fishing so far. Uh, we're going to fish on for a little while yet. But um, unless we get an evening rise, then um, we've had a lovely afternoon, a lovely morning, late morning and uh, it's been a delightful day's fishing here today. Have you enjoyed it today, Dave? Absolutely fabulous. Fernworth is one of my favourite lakes in the southwest. You're not going to catch your big four, five and six pounder rainbows that you get in the other lakes, but you're going to get wild fish and you're going to get stockfish that have gone wild. Um, and as you saw on that last fish, that, that was obviously a stockfish from probably early on in the season. But yeah, beautiful fins on it. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And um, that, is, that is the type of fish that we've been fishing for today. And hopefully, you know, if we fish on for another hour or so, uh, we'll have a few more like that, especially if the sedges start hatching. Indeed, yeah. Well, we've certainly had some good quality fish so far. As you say, that's um, something we'd like to catch more. This is brown trout fishing at the end of the day, though. It doesn't always go the way you want it to. Some days you get a proliferation of, of fish and fish rising everywhere. And other days it gets a bit tougher, like we've had so far today. But, um, yeah, we're going to fish on for a little while and see how we get on. But uh, it's been wonderful so far. Absolutely Thanks, lovely.